The women we've met so far were determined, smart, strategic, and hardworking. Let's take a moment now to hear from two modern makers on what traits they think helped to make women of both the past and present such effective leaders. I think we are effective because we also have to learn how to operate in dual cultures. We are expected to wear multiple hats at the same time, and that can't help but make you an effective leader. I think they have a tendency to want to negotiate more than hitch in the nose and knock you on the ground. Um, they're competitive, but they're competitive in a different way. In 1914, as Nevada's women won the right to vote, countries across the globe became embroiled in World War I. At the time, traditional roles and expectations shaped women's opportunities. But there were plenty of groundbreakers who worked within and around those expectations. Sadie Donson Hurst, for example, was elected as the state's first female legislator in 1918. And it was just a few years earlier that Maude Frazier, our next maker, journeyed cross-country to teach in a Nevada town so small that she couldn't even find it on a map. She was fresh out of school, and she caught a train and never heard of Genoa. She got to Minden, and the train guy said, this is as far as we go, you have got to catch a stage. So she caught a stage to Genoa and taught there. After a few years teaching in Genoa, Maud Fraser transferred to a number of other area schools, some in mining camps, others in small desert towns. In some of these schools, she served as both teacher and principal. In 1921, this dedicated, seemingly fearless and rather ambitious educator set her sights on higher aspirations. Maud Fraser is a perfect example of a maker who moves through the education system accomplishing many things along the way. She was assistant superintendent of schools at one time. Obtaining this position was quite an amazing feat given the fact that only a decade earlier it wasn't even open to female applicants. In Maud's job as assistant superintendent of Nevada schools, she oversaw schools in four different counties, an area that covered more than 40,000 square miles. So. Uh, the feisty Maud Fraser gets in her little roadster and drives all over southern Nevada uh, to remote schoolhouses, checking in with teachers, providing them assistance. Uh, it's quite a remarkable story. But Fraser's remarkable story doesn't end there. She's also credited with helping to build Las Vegas' fledgling school system during the economic challenges of the Great Depression. Never stepping back from a challenge, Maud Fraser went on to seek out even higher positions. She sought the power to influence both statewide education policy and support the passage of the Civil Rights Bill. Then, you know, she became a legislator, a Nevada state legislator. Then she was appointed lieutenant governor of the state of Nevada. I love all those things about Maud Fraser, but I can't uh, help but appreciate that she, with a lot of other people, uh, created the community impetus to build a university in the southern part of the state, and that is UNLV today. Maud Frazier, a champion for education, civil rights, and Nevada's communities, died in 1963.